Between my various clubs and activities, the many relationships that I kindled with both students and staff, and the sweat and tears that I poured into my schoolwork, I knew it was going to be hard to say goodbye to Farmington High School. Yet I did not want my sadness to overshadow the class of 2015's accomplishments. There is one last thing I had to do to celebrate my class's years at Farmington High School, and that was deliver the commencement speech at my graduation ceremony. Due to my role as class body president and valedictorian, it was expected that I deliver the commencement speech. At this point, I was on top of the world. My hard work had paid off and everything had gone according to plan. My speech encompassed the theme, the best is yet to come. I envisioned the year 2015 to be the best year yet because a whirlwind of changes were expected. I vividly remember delivering the speech with thousands of faces staring at me, and yet I was eerily calm. I will never forget my grandmother saying, I heard every minute of it, I am so proud of you. This was the greatest moment of my life. Alongside the many goodbyes that I uttered as the curtain closed on high school, I did not realize that I was also going to have to say goodbye to such a special woman in my life. Life at that moment felt too good to be true, and it turns out I was correct. As I walked out the door to go graduation party hopping the next day, I received a phone call from my brother, who was at his baseball game with my parents. He told me not to attend the parties because my grandmother had just passed away. At that moment, my life felt as though it had plummeted from the top of a mountain to the deepest valley. This sudden plummet changed me, and that it demonstrated the preciousness of life. Life turns on a dime, and this was a turn that I was unprepared for. My grandmother taught me to look to God, to find joy in simple things, to be fearless, never leave the house without an application of lipstick, and the right perfume makes all the difference. She taught me to behave like a lady with strength and class. My admiration for her is endless, and I strive to make her proud with each day that passes. I hope that I can become half the woman that she was. Having been in a relationship with Natalie for a year prior to Suzanne's passing, I grew very close to Natalie's family and the relationship that Natalie and Suzanne shared. During this past Christmas with her family, I found out about Suzanne's passion of a little free library. Natalie's mother, Vicki, told me that one Christmas, Suzanne wanted to buy each of her four children a little free library to put up in their yards. So after being put into a group to build a little free library, I wanted to also include the Pellon family to help them fulfill a dream of Suzanne's. Throughout this project, I've learned further about how important this cause is to Suzanne and her family. As a child, I hated reading books. I did everything I could to avoid the process of picking up a book, sitting down, and beginning to read it. However, it wasn't until recent years, after picking up and reading a piece of work by Malcolm X, that I took on the passion for books and the good words they have to offer. I, on the other hand, loved to read as a child. Reading was something that helped me form a close relationship with my parents and grandparents. I would go through several books a week. Every night when I was a kid, I would pick out a book to read before I went to bed. Despite our differences with reading, we were all able to come together to build a little free library. In honor of my Grandma Suzanne. After hearing about Grandma Suzanne, I was overcome with desire to do so, because Grandma Suzanne had a wish to create a little free library before her passing. It made me realize I can make a difference in a child's life by placing a little free library in their neighborhood and fulfilling a wish for Suzanne and her family. Since we were doing this project in memory of Suzanne, our group wanted to do the very best we could to honor her. We thought it would be an easy service to community projects. But it wasn't. Our group quickly found out how hard this project was going to be. Our drive to do our best was just to find the best home for our little free library. We learned building a little free library is a process and a lot harder to do under three to four months. We need to find the perfect home, which takes a while. On the other hand, it was easier to get family and friends to donate books to our cause. My personal connection to the project brought out my best abilities. I wanted to do the best for Natalie, her grandma, and her family. I personally learned. I personally learned. I personally learned. I personally learned. That I can make a difference, but it takes time. That you need to rely on your connections in order to achieve a goal of this magnitude. Having a passion and a purpose for something combined to create something great. That working with a group of individuals with the same desires and passions as you makes the work toward the end goal much more meaningful. I am so happy that my grandmother's dream of a little free library finally came true. Thank you to Walter, Muna, Thomas, and Tyler for turning this dream into a reality. My family and I are so appreciative of the work that you all have done. Hey, hey.
Little free libraries hate. Hey. Little free libraries hate. Yeah. Thomas yeah. Walt, hey. Moon, or Tyler hate. Yeah. Hey. yeah, we've been on a search. Trying to find a home for these little kid books. That's happening now. But everywhere we go, everywhere we look. They throwing up a note. <laughs> why they saying no? 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 That's all you really wanna know. Why they saying no? Why they saying no? Why they saying no? Why they saying no?